Here's a quick video about stuff we learned climbing Mount Bach, one of the unsung peaks of the Tetons. Almost as high as the middle, but more fun. It's just uh, south of the Grand, the middle, and the south. Okay, I have three tips to know. Uh, number one, that last mile is pretty gnarly. You wouldn't want to do it in a sedan. You want some clearance. Number two, there is an outhouse at the trailhead. Always good to know. Number three, I'm drinking some beet juice because the studies show on it helps you in endurance stuff. This sign at the trailhead is the first hint that you aren't getting any help by the way of signage hiking up Mount Buck. It's as if they don't want you to do it. So download all trails or bring a friend who's done it before. So Bye. we're half a Bye. mile in and thinks we've got Brent or we would have just kept going up the trail because that doesn't look like much of a trail. But all trails would show us. This is the one mile point water source. Another water source and fun crossing at the 1.9 mile marker. Okay, this is the 2.3 mile mark. Okay, this is the three mile mark and it makes me wish I had not brought any water in my Camelback and I just relied on my water filter bottle. Yeah, I was wrong about that. It's misleading if you divide the hike up in terms of miles, you need to divide it up in terms of time and that last mile takes a lot longer. I wish I'd had that water bottle filled. All right, thanks to Brent's great advice, we've just come up a switch back here. I'm just now pulling out my hiking sticks, but really we've avoided the scree, and nah, it's starting to, gonna scramble a little bit more. Three point, what'd I say, 3.4? Down through those right. trees. Yeah, we came up around there, and now we're going across kind of a boulder field with a trail, and so far, we're still matching up with the All Trails Trail. So our friend Brent, is your fourth time? Yes, this is my fourth. And, you know, and I've only done the best trail once. <laughs> okay, so tell us the best trail. So the best <laughs> trail is left of the scree field and right of the, the cliffs, including that big flat rock that kind of has a, a gorge up between the two cliffs. Okay. And we'll just kind of stay to the right of that. that rock. <laughs> there will be a trail that if we find it, it will be kind of evident part to the way up there. And then are we hiking right to left and then we'll along? Go left, yeah, right to left. We'll go up below those big rocks up there and cross over and through a boulder field. And then we'll kind of crest up to where we traverse a little over and then it's on the way to the peak. We got about a mile left or so, something like that? Probably. Okay. So uh, we're back at the point where the trails have reunited, but I think basically we came to our right of that valley down there and the all trails thing goes to the left. I don't know if it's much worse, but we were happy with the path we took. And at this point at like four point something miles, we've got the little lake there. And Static Peak there? Yes. Brent, a Mount Block. So we could go up there, but we're not. We're gonna go around the ridge here. We did this hike in mid-August 2022. I was surprised to find such wildflowers. And we only saw three other hikers. One of them took a picture of the three of us. So this approach we're going up right now, it's like a, a wall or a face approach. So we're just ascending up a lot of climbing directly up flat rocks with good handholds. That's very similar to um, the difficult sections on the Grand Teton. Personally, I find the key in this part where I switched to gloves and put away my hiking sticks. It's just to look about this far ahead of me and not to look up like that. It's a little scary if I look up like that. Way scary if I look down. So just one foot in front of the other. Just beautiful. Wow. And then, well, in fact, we'll just keep it on here. I'll just keep it on here. See how we go. Trying to keep it as steady as I can. I grab on with my left hand to some stuff. And I'm running out of stuff to climb up to, which is a good sign. You're gonna see it before I do. I saw it from down a little lower. This moment, is, it's a moment. 
huh? <laughs> Look at that. Hello, Grand. Okay, so that's Table Rock in the distance there. And then the first peak we can see here is the south, the middle, just to the left of the tallest one is Enclosure, and the tallest one is the Grand. And then coming down to the right, the pointy one, you think, is Tiwanat? Yes. And then as we come down from Tiwanat, the lake we see in the distance is Jackson Lake, we think, we'll confirm. And then just the right edge of Jenny Lake. And then just Taggart Lake, we think. And then we can't see Phelps Lake, and we don't know the name of this ridge. But notice then you see the Snake River running all through Teton National Park. And then oddly enough, you see an airport in the middle of Teton National Park, who was grandfathered in later. And then you see Jackson Hole, ski slopes in the distance, and you see uh, Snake River continue on down to the Hoback. Snake River stuff, Marion Lake, and don't know the name of this peak right here? Stepsister Peak? And then it, the water, Shane, down there, that water, is that Alaska, Alaska Basin? Alaska Basin. Uh -huh. So Alaska Basin then goes on out through that canyon, the shelf, Devil's Staircase down there. And then you make your way over here to Hurricane Pass and back to Taylor's Just one more thing to note. This is the, this is the ridge. This is the top here. I mean, it's like five to ten feet wide of that. And then you go down and you got stuff like that on that side and pretty steep on this side. It's a mountain peak. Zip line! So down climbing was worrying me more than climbing up. And it is a thing to be reckoned with. But after the first two minutes, I'm feeling okay. That's the top right up there. And we had a ways to go. We're gonna go to the left of the lake, to the right of that cliff, and then down that canyon, and then right into our car. We just came down switchbacks and stuff, but really needed to use our hands. If you come the, the map way on all trails, you gotta come through the chute. Just coming down just doesn't look fun to us. Perfect. All right, we finished in 10 hours and 10 minutes. What are your takeaways? Uh, water. Let's do water. Water. First. Um, I carried a two liter bladder and I and a small water bottle and I finished it all before we got all the way down. I I would have uh, carried a filter with me so I could have filled them. Compare this one to the middle. What did you think? Oh, this one. I love the scenery so much more than the middle. <laughs> Me too. I love all the way up the I middle. love Garnet Canyon, but after that, just a scree yeah. fest. This there were beautiful flowers, and, uh, and would you have worn the pants, the zip off pants to start? You know, I, I there the brush was a little overgrown on the trail, but it wasn't too bad. So well, I, I while I was going through it, I wished I'd had the pants yeah. on, and then as soon as we were done, I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, I got scratched up a little bit, but. Okay, uh, poles. So I took poles. You guys were fine and happy without poles. Coming down, uh, coming down, I uh, I had a tinge of envy that you had poles. Yeah, and yeah. It, so I fell once when I had forgotten to take my poles out on the way down. Oh, and also my gloves. I, so mm -hmm. I liked having gloves for the part where you use in your hands in the last bit of climbing, and I liked my poles a lot for a stretch of it. Okay.